Hi, for this video what we are going to do is we are going to find the mean, the variance, and the standard deviation of a discrete random variable. So if you have a discrete probability distribution and you want to find the average or the standard deviation, this is the process that you would do. Um, for this one, I am using the TI-84 graphing calculator. I am not doing hand calculations. So if you're looking for how to do hand calculations, you would not want to watch this video. For this, I do have listed out all of the formulas if you were to do hand calculations, and I want to talk about them so that you understand what the calculator is doing. The calculator is so much quicker at this than we are by hand, and so most of the time we would use some kind of technology in order to find this. The formula for finding the mean of a discrete random variable is the sum of all of, um, the, sorry, the sum of the product of your x variable, all the possible outcomes for x, times the probability of x. This is something, this also is known as the expected value. So if you're trying to figure out your expected profits or something based on a probability distribution, uh, this is how you would calculate that. The variance, remember that we use sigma squared. Sigma squared is the notation that we use for variance. And it is found, if you wanted to do hand calculations with this, uh, you would have to take each of the individual x values, subtract the mean from each individual value, square those values, and then multiply all of those values by the probability of x. So this is something that is very time consuming to do hand calculations, which is why I'm showing you how to do it in the graphing calculator. And remember that the relationship between the variance and the standard deviation is the standard deviation is always the square root of the variance, or you could say that the variance is the standard deviation squared. We are going to remember that the variance is the standard deviation squared because our calculator gives us the standard deviation and not the variance. So for this, what we are going to do is we are going to take our data set and we are going to put our x values um, into L1. So remember to do that, we hit stat and edit. I don't have any information in there. Remember, if you did, you would just hit the clear button when you're highlighted at the top. So I would plug in my values, the one, two, three, four, and five. With this, if we look at the probabilities, the 4 is going to have the largest influence on this because of the fact that 53% of our data um, points fell in, had a, an x value of 4. So because this one has the largest probability, we know that our mean is going to be the closest to this. So our mean will be somewhere between 3 and 4 just based on the values, but it's going to be the closest to 4 because 53%, over half of our values fall in this area. So what we're going to do in L2 is we're going to put our 0 0.02, 0 0.08, 0 0.17, 0 0.53, and 0.2. And as always, I can't specify enough how important it is to make sure that your values that you put in the calculator match what is on paper. Okay, because if you put in the wrong values, you will get the wrong answer every time. It's not that the calculator is doing the wrong calculations. It's only calculating what you put in. So with this, after you have entered your data, you are going to hit the stat button and arrow over to where it says calculate. When you arrow over to calculate, we're going to choose the first one, the one var stats. If this menu does not show up for you, I will show you what your command should look like after I'm done. So in um, our list is going to be L1. This is going to be wherever we put our X values. We put our X values in L1, so I'm going to leave it there. We have to use a frequency list on this because we're looking at our probabilities. Our probabilities is how often those occur. So I'm going to use L2 for the frequency list. And I'm going to hit calculate. So when I do this, the calculator only puts it as X bar. X bar, remember, is the mean of the sample. You have to remember the notation for this because it's since you're dealing with a probability distribution and this sums up to be 100%, since you're dealing with 100% of the values, this would be a population, so we use mu. It is a parameter because we're dealing with all of it. So even though the calculator says x bar, you have to remember that the mean of a probability um, distribution function 
or the probability of a dis or the mean of a discrete random variable, sorry, you have to use the notation mu. So remember that this is the Greek letter for m. And we found the mean to be 3.81. And as I said before, when we were going into this beforehand, I said it's going to be close to 4 because of the fact that the majority of our information is there. And we can see that 3.81 um, is definitely close to 4. For the variance, we have to first find the standard deviation because the calculator gives us our standard deviation. Um, we would first write down what our standard deviation is. And then we would square that value to find the variance. Sorry, can't write and talk at the same time. Let me fix that. So the standard deviation is the square root of the variance. In your calculator, it gives us um, the standard deviation as sigma x. If you notice this time, the sample isn't even there, so this has to force you into going, oh yeah, I'm dealing with an entire population. Okay, so for this, our standard deviation is 0 0.9132 approximately. And to get our variance, what we would do is remember that if we hit the VARS button, it stands for variables, and we would go down to our statistics variables, and then we would choose option 4, so we would either scroll down to option four or you can hit the number four, either one will work. And our calculator has stored in it the sigma x and then I would hit squared. Okay, so our variance is 0.8339. Okay, so for this, if you are using the TI-84, you must first find the mean and the standard deviation. Then you would square the standard deviation to get the variance. Um, I did say that I was going to show you what would happen if you don't get the list. There are some of you that have the older graphing calculators. As far as everything else goes, it's the same. But if you notice this, if you have an older calculator where that menu, after I hit the stat, I'm just going to go back to it so you know what I'm talking about. If this menu does not come up for you, um, what you would do is you would type in this command into your calculator. Um, once the one var stats comes up, you would just put L1 comma L2. So to do that, um, let me just grab this so that you can see. So if you don't get that menu screen, I'm just going to delete this so you can see how to plug it in. You get one var stats shows up and you would just do second one and then you would hit the comma button second two and then enter and it would give you all of the information. So um, I just wanted to revisit that in case you have an older calculator or you have a TI-83, that's how you would have to do it. As always, thanks for watching. I hope that this um, was, a, was sufficient in helping you to find the mean, the variance, and the standard deviation with the TI-84. Thank you.